is a doubling sequence. If you double one, you get two. If you double two, you get four. If you double eight, uh, four, you get eight. Then you get 16, which is seven. Then 32, which is five. And then 64, which is one again. And if you look at that, then you see here, the double of one is two, double of two is four, double of four is eight, double of eight is 16, which is seven, double of 16 is 32, which is five, and the double of 32 is 64, which is one again. And this goes on infinitely. And you can also see the symbol of infinity in this pattern, but now it's rectangular, it's more square-like. That's doubling. Let's see what happens when we half, when we uh, start halving. If we half one, we get 0.5, which is five. If we half 0.5, we get 0.25. Two plus five is seven. If we half 0.25, we get one, two, five, which is eight. Then we get here, zero, zero, six, two, five. And then we get here, and then we get here. That's the other order, this is like this, other sequence. It's going the other way round. Also infinite, but the other way round. So you could say this way is the doubling sequence, and the other way round is the halving sequence. And this is very important. If we look, for instance, at computer technology, everybody knows the series. Yeah, the binary computer language is based on doubling. But also if we look at the biology, a cell is split into two which are two cells, is doubling, then it splits into four, four cells, then it splits into eight, until 64. When it's back here, when we have 64 different cells, it's still one unity. And then it starts to specialize into different cells. So it's very important that we understand that 64 is also a unity, a unit. Let's look at the other line, the dotted line. What does it mean? When we start doubling from 3, we get 3, 6, 3, 6, 3, 6, until infinitely. And when we half, we also get the same numbers, 3 and 6. So what happens if we double a half? They just jump, like this, jump from 3 to 6 and back. That's all we have. The series, the 9 plays a special role, because it's not jumping directly, it always has to go through the nine and then goes here, and then through the nine and back. So it's this kind of rhythm. And that's the special rhythm of three, six, nine, six, nine, three. Three, six, nine, six, nine, three. Also an infinite rhythm. So we, in fact, we have three rhythms. One rhythm going like this, other rhythm is going like this, and the third rhythm is going like this all the time. That is, in fact, what this symbol is representing, three different rhythms. And here we see them uh, visualized as a lemnis case. This is the rhythm of 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5, 1, 2, 4, 8, 7, 5. This is the doubling sequence. This is the other one, 1, 5, 7, 8, 4, 2, 1, 5, 7, 8, 4, 2 is the other way around. And here we have 9, 3, 3, 9, 6, 6, 9, 3, 3, and so on. Nine is in the center. Nine is the most important number. This is already a special, but the nine is the most special. Oh. Why am I explaining all this? Because, in fact, each, each, I'm sorry, each of these rhythms is, in fact, a line, or you could say a thread, a thread that makes up the skin of the apple. You can see it as a cloth woven by three different types of lines. And these lines can be infinitely long because of this rhythm. They continue to go on forever, if, if necessary, or not. But they can, they, they can be as long as, as we want them to be. And they're always grouped in a certain way. And making a kind of square, which always has the same dynamics. Each square has the same dynamics. And also the way these, these three make, uh, these three threads are connected, making long lines, but they're always connected to another pair of three lines in the same way. The four and the seven always meet up. Those are the reciprocals. The two and the five always meet up. The one and the one, the two and the five, the four and the seven. They're always connected in the same way. And what you also see, but I didn't explain before, is that each cipher has a positive 
meaning a yin value, or a negative, meaning a yang value. So in fact, we have 18 different values. Again, we have the number of 18. And what you in fact here see is a part of the skin of the apple. The skin is going inwards and it's turning and it's going outwards again, going in and out. That's a spiraling dynamics. And this, if we add up the numbers, then it re becomes really special. Because if we add this up, we get nine. If we add these three up, we get zero. Zero, 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 and we get minus nine. And it goes forever. So what we now, in fact, have is the, is the heartbeat, sorry, is the heartbeat of the apple. Because if we add up the numbers, the ciphers that are next to each other, when they pass through the core of the apple, we get first the plus nine, plus nine value, then a couple of zeros, then the minus nine, back to the plus nine. This is nearly about the same thing we see when we measure our heartbeat. This is the heartbeat of the apple, the energetic heartbeat of, uh, of the flow world. We also see these three different threads in our DNA. We can only see two DNAs because the shadow of the special one is not visible in our world. We cannot, there's no matter connected to it. But of course it's energetically is it there. And if you see carefully, there is a third helix missing. Yeah, there is space exactly for a third helix. And then you get this rhythm. Here you see that they are filling all the spaces. So that means that there are three threads in fact, in our, in our DNA, which is exactly the same as the three threads of the skin of the apple. If we now look at the DNA, the way they are connected, there are four different types of bases, base connections. Guanine, cytosine, adenine, and thymine. They also correspond each to a different energy. They're a different spiraling phase, earth, air, water, or fire. And these four different connections they are at each other position, and three positions in a row is a genetic unit. At this position, there can be four different um, bases. There can be G, C, A, or T can be here. But the same here. Here can also be four different, and here can also be four different types. Means that there are, in total, four times four times four is 64 different combinations possible. 64 is again the number one. So this is another example how 64 is a very important number. That's yes, also present in the I Ching. There are 64 different uh, hexagrams in the I Ching. Or if we look at a chessboard, there are 64 fields in the chessboard. So this number 64 is extremely important. And this number 64 is also one again. Six plus four is 10, which is one. This means this is a unit, a genetic unit. And this genetic unit is the basic code for the production of amino acids. And there are 20 different amino acids in a human body. Here we see 20 is 2. Here we see the step from 1 to 2, which is the doubling sequence. This is just one small example how we can see the validity of the, yeah, the core code, of the source code of ciphers and the way they uh, interact with everything we know.